Welcome back to the Cricket Today podcast on Monday, February 5. Buzzing from a great weekend of cricket. I uh, got to go to the match at the MCG with Mark, because it was absolutely up and about. Uh, we, the weekend also featured two Australia versus West Indies early eyes and some international cricket, some test matches as well that we'll get into. Uh, we're buzzing all, all of our new subscribers on YouTube, so thank you very much for getting around Cricket Today podcast, getting heaps of traction on that, so we're very happy with that. Send in any questions uh, in those YouTube comments or any, any of the socials, just because we can answer them on the podcast, we can answer them in the comments, and it, yeah, we can build up a bit of fun between uh, us and the audience so get around that if you can uh yeah we'll get right into it i'm your host leo mccain also known as the stats guy i'm here with leo malelli he's also up and about here going leo yeah good thanks stats guy i am up and about not sure why um aussies bounce back that's probably why oh it's because the podcast is back on a monday and we love a big <laughs> show uh also with marcus barzano couldn't drag him out of bay 13 on uh friday how you going marcus <laughs> oh it was great fun um escaped the escape the security guards a few times and no, i was it was great it was. It was. It's always going off there. When we first got there at the G, we were thinking, oh, geez, it's a bit bit quiet over there. And then towards the end of the day, it was going off. Uh, today, yeah, as I mentioned, we went to that one at the MCG, Australia versus the West Indies in the ODI. We're going to break down both of the ODIs between those two teams. One was at the G, oh, MCG, and one was at the SCG. We're going to do a yeah, nah, uh, including that from the first match, a short recap of what's going on, and then a bit of a look into the second test between India and England. Uh, Leo's not very happy before this show because England might actually have a chance to win again, which is crazy. It's a great test match between uh, two of the best sides in the world. So let's get right into it, lads. Uh, first ODI at the MCG. It was, it was actually a pretty fun match. Uh, yeah, when we went there, we met some uh, fun people as well, Marcus and I, so check them out on the socials. West Indies number one fan, I reckon we met with the full kit and everything. So what happened in that one, Leo? Just quickly with the scores and then we'll have a bit of chat about it. Yeah, Windy's batted first and it was uh, very similar to how they batted throughout the test match, sort of just sort of just going along really nothing too much happening casey cardi i hope i pronounced that right i think uh, it's 80, casey yeah casey casey, casey cardi uh 88 of 108 he was really really impressive didn't know much about him anchored the innings uh really really strong at the top of the order batting three there um but xavier bartlett was superb wasn't he four for 17 of his nine overs um, what, what do you say, stats guy, the, the best outswinger in, in Australia? The best outswinger in Australia right now, I'm saying that, like, I, I'm not saying he's the best overall bowler, but the way he can yeah, get that outswinger goal and not many people can play him, I, I know that's a big call, but I think he is. You heard it here first, stats guy thinks Xavier <laughs> Bartlett is the best bowler ever. No. <laughs> um, Marcus would be spewing though, because he spent the whole podcast uh, talking down Bartlett and then he performs like that. So, well, uh, I think Xavier Bartlett actually listens to this show and he's probably thinking, oh, I need to prove that uh, Marcus wrong. What, what happened with that one, Marcus? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I can only hold my hands up. He, he, I'm happy that he proved me wrong because um, yeah. he was excellent, wasn't he? Um, but an absolute peach for his first wicket. Uh, to knock, uh, I think it was Justin Greaves over uh, the top of our stump. So, yeah, he was great. He was awesome. Yeah, and then Australia, they uh, took over with the bat. Inglis was sort of all guns blazing at the start, wasn't he? 65 off 43. Didn't see much of Trav Ball, which was a shame, but it was the the Smith and, and Green show. Smith going out of run of balls. I had to double check the scorecard when I saw that. And then, yeah, Green just played a, a nice anchor in innings as well. But we go to the slog of the weekend. Stats guy, who'd you, uh, who'd you like here? Well, as you mentioned, uh, Inglis, we were a bit hesitant uh, talking about him last podcast, uh, saying, oh, should he open, should he not? He came out just hitting absolute bombs. The one slog of the weekend, I want to say, is clipped it off his legs. We're at the J. We're sitting probably right behind the bowler. He clipped it leg side past the boundary, past about five or 10 rows back at the G. That's one of the hardest shots. I think a lot of guys get caught on the boundary or at least it trickles for a four. He's hit a six well over the, uh, over the ropes and into the crowd. It was absolutely awesome. So that's going to be the slog of the weekend. Really proved me wrong uh, opening. Obviously he's a class player. He's been really good for the Perth Scorchers, really good in domestic cricket, just all uh, last couple of years, pretty much. Uh, and he's awesome. I, I wouldn't yeah, mind seeing him in almost all formats over Kerry at the moment, uh, which is, I know a lot of another big call, but, He's in really good form and just glad to see you did the uh, slog of the weekend. Definitely was an absolute ball. Marcus uh, and I were pretty shocked uh, with that one, that, how far it went. Don't you reckon, Marcus? Yeah, well, I've, I definitely backed that big call that you just said, Inglis uh, over Kerry in, yeah. in most formats. Uh, I, I'd take that. But yeah, that, that hit was huge. It would have been almost 100 metres at least. Um, yeah. yeah, like five or 10 rows back at the at the MCG is huge. Um, Nuts. But Jake, Jake Fraser McGurk, a little bit stiff for slog of the weekend as well, <laughs> coming for his debut. Was True. Dot, 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 four, six, and then he gets out. <laughs> yeah. um, so in classic uh, Jake Fraser McGurk style, the rooster. Yeah. 
I think they were talking on the radio. He's never going to change his uh, style of just going for it. Uh, pretty much after he's, oh, he has a few few uh, siders. Oh yeah, nah, I'm in now, and then just bang, and then he, but then he got out pretty annoyingly. So I think he needs to improve on that one, and uh, might have to put his head down a bit. But that's the way he plays, a bit like Maxi, just going for it. The young big show there, they're calling him. So uh, we talked about Xavier Bartlett, Marcus. You got a bit of a yeah nah for us about him. I do. Um, and it was about his excellent figures of four for 17 off nine overs, which is just ridiculous. Uh, he's got an average of, I think, 4.2 or something, um, which is yeah, just crazy to even think about. But is Xavier Bartlett's ODI debut the best we've ever seen? Oh, yeah, nah. you go, Leah. Statistically, no. But in terms of like what I've watched, probably, like... I well, that's, seen... that's, a, that's a bit stupid. The second, second best statistically, no. <laughs> well, it's not. You, you asked, yeah, is yeah, it the yeah, best? Yeah. So yeah. it's not. <laughs> but I didn't watch Tony Dottomade take five for 21 and I watched Bartlett take four for 17. So maybe in terms of me watching it, yes. What do you reckon, uh, stats boy? I did have a look at some of the highlights. I don't know why you called me that, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> I did have a look at some of the highlights. You got Stuart McGill, I think he had four for 19. That was an awesome bowling effort. Then I saw you know, some of the highlights of Tony Donamade. It's five for 21. I'm going to I'm gonna say, yeah, why not? I think Bartlett, just the absolute peach that he bowled at first up. Uh, we're going to talk about it later for the Jaffa of the weekend. Uh, there's a bit of a rival there. But the absolute peach he bowled first up was probably the one of the best balls you can see for someone bowling on debut. That was That was unbelievable. I know it was against the West Indies, but some of those guys at the top of the order actually have really decent averages. Like I'm not sure if he got Shy Hope out. I need to double check that, but he averages 50 something in uh, 51 in ODI cricket. You've got guys at the top of their order that aren't chumps. They, they, Butler was getting out some really good players and I'm going to say, yeah, why not? Best ODI uh, debut. Just a, just a big year, of, year for me, Marcus. What, what about you? Your own year now? Um, I'm going to lean towards no. Um, it was great to see, like, see him do what he did, uh, especially at the home of cricket at the MCG. But I just think that there's probably other performances with the bat. But if we're focusing just on the ball um, as a debut, then I'd lean towards here. Yeah, no, fair enough. Actually, the other point was a lot of people were saying how flat the surface was and it was going to be easy to bat on. He just comes out and yeah, gets a forfeit. So good on him and very good economy rate as well, which we love to see. All right, let's quickly get into the second ODI, which was yesterday and last night. Leo, you want to quickly go through the scores for that one? Well, the Aussies were in a bit of trouble at one stage. I think five for a hundred odd. Um, and there were just a lot of starts, weren't there? You know, Cam Green got himself in, Marnus, Matt Shaw, uh, Hardy, even Sutherland all got these starts. And But it was Abbott who really surprised me, 69 of 63. I think uh, I was with my mate and I was just having a go. We were both having a go at why the hell is Abbott batting above Sutherland? It's an absolute <laughs> joke. And then he comes out and hits 50. So That's why, yeah. Now that that proved proved me wrong, um, but Moti uh, he was brilliant with the ball, three for twenty eight off his ten. Really slowed things down for the Aussies when it looked like Short and Hardy were going to get going. Got the big wicket of Matt Short as well, uh, and then yeah, the Windies they just bit bit slow at the start, and then they had to play catch up and and sort of got themselves. Uh, I guess just yeah, needing to play a bit more aggressively, and we just held our own and got wickets from that. Abbott, three for 40 off 10. I was bagging him uh, on Thursday <laughs> saying saying Joe Richardson's better. Um, no. He still probably is, but uh, good on Sean Abbott for, for playing well. And, yeah, Cardi, again, 40 off 51. Um, another another t- uh, top score for him. Um, he gets the moral victory of the week while we're here. So yep. he got back-to-back top scores, but they did not win. Didn't really – can't really hold your, your hat on that one. Um, so he'll get a little – Moral victory. One thing I was curious though, he batted so well at three in the first game and then he got pushed to five. Yeah. That was a bit of a strange one. Um, he still batted well, but I would I would have him at, at three every game um, going forward. He looked really good in that first ODI. Uh, but yep. what did you boys make of this one? Yeah, that, on Cardi, I think he, he sort of had moments where you don't think, oh, he's gone a bit slow, but then he'd hit a few bounces and get that run rate or strike rate sort of back up a little bit. Definitely very weird that they yeah, changed the order when he was there. He made 88. So he, if he came in a bit earlier, he possibly would have had the newer ball keeping it off the back bat a bit more. He could have made more than 40 again. I think he's yeah, a really good player. He, uh, yeah, we'll love him watching him yeah, on Friday. Yeah, just to touch on that, he should have made a century in that first game because he got absolutely yeah. burnt oh, I forgot, by I forgot his about that. Yeah. He did. Um, so I would I would have been fuming if I was him. 
Yeah. That was a classic uh, stats guy call. That one, if he was batting, just get, oh. I've, got to get, I've got to get off strike. I'm scared of facing. I've got to uh, get off strike. I'll cop anything in cricket, but I was I can use my voice while well, a bit of it. Yes, <laughs> yes or no? No, no wait. No anything else? No yeah, nah. Yes, no. That's all. You boys, do. boys, boys. I need to get my average up. <laughs> run. <laughs> run, yeah, run. <laughs> oh, geez, I don't know where that's come from, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to. I'm gonna play yeah play a bit of cricket next year we'll see see how we go we can all do, we all film each other on a gopro or something i reckon and we'll have to post that out there and oh, see how we go oh that's funny but yeah the aussies did, yeah absolutely smashed them in the end obviously it would have been a really close game uh without abbott making that 69 it could have been a bit closer because the windies wouldn't have had to go as hard uh if they were only making 200 or so so it would have been really interesting if abbott didn't make that that big score but the Aussies got the job done two and oh in the series there Let's have a look at a bit of an international roundup as well. We've got India versus England that we were talking about before the show. We're actually going to go right down to the wire again. So if you're a lover of cricket, check out this uh, series because there's some absolutely big, massive scores, some big wicket takers. It has it, has it all this series. So mm-hmm. India versus England. Do you want to re- quickly read out some of those scores, Liam? Yeah, this, this is a, a crazy series, isn't it? You yeah. Got- the stalwarts of India up against the revolutionaries, the Bazballs, if you like. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, England need 399 to win. And normally you go, oh, that's uh, not achievable. They'll be all out for 250 max. Um, but this is what Bazball's doing, and I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It makes you think that they're going to win this game, and I, it's just infuriating, and it's disgusting. And I just wanted to go back to the days where England were all out for 250 here. They lose comfortably and it's all done. But this game is on. Crawl, I think, is it Crawley still at the wicket or Duckett? Yep. Crawley still Crawley at the Luke. wicket. Um, they've got the Night Hawk in, I think they call it, Rian Ahmed. He'll probably go out and hit some bombs. He could make a century. It's Basball. We don't know what the, we don't know what's going to happen. Oh, no, whoa. Uh, nothing happened there. Nothing happened there. Uh, <laughs> I did, if basketball just gets me fired up. That's, that's, that's it. This dude. is I love reading out the scores. The anger that you read out those scores is awesome. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Uh, yeah, even if I don't like I don't like England as well. Obviously, uh, being an Aussie supporter, but I got to admire the way they're going about it and the way that this series is panning out because it's so much fun. I, I, I'm going to have to watch this uh, later today. I reckon. What do you, what do you reckon, Marcus? Oh, who, do you, who, do you, who do you reckon might win? Actually, it's a great time to watch this game, isn't it? Because in Australia, it's it's a perfect time. It starts yeah. at 3 p.m., so it's more even like a day-nighter, really, um, here in Australia. So uh, definitely tune in for that one. But it's got the looks of a Ben Stokes clutch game, doesn't it? Um, just the way he's going at the moment. I think it was on 40-odd and then copped an absolute peach from Jasper Brummo. And I'll just say, boys, just quickly, Jaffer of the weekend, are we going Brummo's wicket against Stokes? Or Xavier Bartlett's first wicket in. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna go Boomer to Pope, the oh, Yorker that knocked out three stump, well, nearly two and a half stump, basically. I thought that was a, an incredible delivery, Ollie Pope. I feel like he's the type of guy that just gets out to really good deliveries. Like he he, he doesn't yeah. sort of get himself out type thing. But that was extraordinary from Boomer. And to someone who made a double century or nearly a double century last game, it was such an important wicket too. Yeah, I'm going to go Boomer as well. I think he's the best uh, reverse swing. But like once the ball is a bit older, he just has it perfectly swinging either way. He's he's un- unstoppable. Awesome to watch. Uh, but with that really straight action he gets, it's so hard to read which way it's going to swing with that reverse swing. He swung that a mile. It felt like it was coming off the pitch. And then it cleaned up all three stumps. As you mentioned, Pope, uh, Stokes, that Stokes wicket is really good. But the Pope one, where Pope's pretty much on his face. Like, it was like a stick cricket uh, wicket if people uh, out there <laughs> played a bit of stick cricket where you get cleaned up as well as the stumps. So I think that was pretty funny. And uh, yeah, that's going to be my Jaffer of the week. What do you reckon, uh, Marcus yeah. Barlow or Boomer? Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Boomer. Um, I, I just like I fancy that a bit more, a bit of touch of extra pace. Uh, yeah. That little hint away was was really good. Um, but you know who also took out three stumps on the weekend, boys? Oh, here we go. You. Oh, oh no, I'm not talking about me. Oh, <laughs> well, not, not on you the really weekend. laid that up like no, you're going to self weekend. trumpet this there. This was a week ago. Um, but it's a bit of a moral victory for Ben Folks, who absolutely ran straight through the stump. Oh, yeah. Did you boys see that when he was keeping? Yeah, that um, was Balls come in and he's, he's sprinted straight through the stumps. That was hilarious. <laughs> uh, classic, classic England moral victory there. Uh, oh. But oh, In terms of who's going to win this India versus England game, geez, I hope it's going to be India because I... Cannot stand if England win this test match. Yeah, I hate like baseball. We all hate baseball. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say India as well. I think that's such a big score. What do they need 332 still? But 
uh, like like Leo said, it's going to come right down to the wire. Un- unfortunately, just because the way they're batting, they've got so many guys just hitting it out of the middle, and they're going to go at a quick pace. So it might be done in the next yeah. Well, oh, I was going to say day and a half, maybe even okay. less. It'll yeah. be it'll be done today. I reckon. It, it could be done okay. today, which yeah. is unbelievable to make yeah three hundred and thirty two runs that quickly. But that's mm. the way they play, so it'll be really interesting, and we'll keep up with that and, and have a chat about it actually on our next show on Wednesday, which would be uh, when it's all wrapped up, most likely. Uh, can, all right. Can we, can we have a quick talk about uh, just quickly? I just want to touch on how how brilliant Jace Wall was in the first innings. Who? Um, oh, Jace Wall. Sorry, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You cut out a bit there. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, double century. Um, yeah. you know, on an Indian pitch is yeah. is a fantastic effort, um, and it had to take a sixty seven year old Jimmy Anderson to get him out. <laughs> the experience of uh, yeah, Jimmy Anderson, yeah, two hundred two hundred nine. That's is that that's going to be the biggest score in this uh, series as well. That's unbelievable. The amount of hundreds and massive scores in this series while this guy's getting big wicket uh, holes is is crazy, and, and that's why it's yeah, really awesome cricket. Uh, all right, that's it for the Cricket Today show. We covered the Aussie and West Indies ODIs. We'll yeah, cover a bit more of the Aussies coming up. And then we yeah, that England-India test match, as we talked about then, is so exciting and yeah, great for cricket, even though yeah, Australians are not liking baseball. We'll be back with this on Wednesday with another huge wrap-up of a few, yeah, few more of the cricket uh, the next couple of days. So check out the socials and some inter- interviews ahead of the ODI in our next podcast on Wednesday. So get right around the show. Subscribe on your podcast app, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Like and review it, would you? Chuck a follow to Cricket today and cricket today au all over the socials that's facebook instagram tiktok and x send in any questions on those socials on youtube we'll answer them here on the podcast have a bit of fun with that also check out football today au football today pod uh we're doing lots of stuff with that with the apr marcus and i uh filthy i can't believe marcus stayed up and watched uh, the blues chelsea blues 4-2 alex uh the host of the show will be up and about sadly because arsenal beat liverpool uh and get gave liverpool their first loss so not happy about that, but uh, we'll see, see how we go on the Football Today pod. So send in any questions at all by the socials. And I think that's it, guys. Thank you very much, Marcus. Cheers, that's guy. Thanks, Leo. Thanks, that's guy. Thank you very much, Gerald. Thanks to me. And that's another episode of Cream Today Done. We're out. <laughs>